Coach, if you go ahead and make an opening statement and also maybe something uh, about Al. Got a lot of questions about him today and his last game here at Assembly Hall, potentially. Well, senior days. Well, senior days taking on a new sort of a new dynamic here. And um, I've told those guys last night in our team meeting, talked about Cooper, and also talked about Al. And, um, you know, Ryan Cook, who joined us a couple of summers ago, has been fantastic for our, our program. Um, extremely, extremely unselfish. Great energy, uh, whether it's a weight room, a morning workout, a summer workout, it's practice, you name the job that you ask him to do, he does it. He's been a great addition to what we're doing. And, um, you know, for him to be able to play here, I know it was big, but he's going to be uh, successful in whatever he wants to do um, when you're that hard of worker. After we do from day one, um, you go through a lot of and how special players and how special players are made. He's as loyal as it gets. He's as coachable as it gets. And he's as hard of working guy as you'll ever be around. And, um, you know, to me, you know, to me he, right now is, he right now is finishing the way that you like seniors to finish by rallying our troops and staying positive. But at the end of the day, he's playing so hard. You know, he's working very, very hard right now for us. And it's up to us to figure out how we can deliver a better performance on his senior day. But it's also up to us to figure out how we can keep playing, you know, with him. But Al's a, a guy that 10, 15 years from right now, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised whatever field he's in how successful he's going to be just because of the personality, uh, the teamwork, uh, likable, smart. I mean, he's just got so many different types of things going for him. And, um, you know, um, I'm just sad that his family, Cooper's family as well, our manager's family, um, it's tough to not have those guys on the floor, and especially without our fans. I mean, it's very difficult for, for to imagine a senior day, uh, sort of like here when you're accustomed to the – senior day festivities that they've seen over their time. So that was disappointing. Today's game was disappointing in the outcome. Um, Michigan is a terrific team. And they have a lot of answers on both ends of the floor. Tremendous size, inside on offense and also inside on defense. Very difficult, um, you know, to, to, to stay in rhythm on offense because of their ability to switch like likes. And they're so big at the three, four, and five. Um, they really protect the rim. And uh, we got off to a good start. Um, the first half, I have to watch the film, but, you know, they shot 18 free throws in the first half, you know, and when you give a team 18 foul shots in the first half, that's, that's a lack of physicality and a lack of discipline. Um, and I think, you know, their overall size and, and ability to drive was the more aggressive team. I also thought we had some really tough reach-in calls that are undisciplined, but they made every free throw 16 out of 18 in the first half uh, was a big deal. You know, we are the number one free throw shooting team in the league in terms of getting to the line. And I don't think we've been outshot from the foul line 18 to nine and a half all year. That was very a big part of the first half in it changing towards the end was our guys having to sit uh, second half. You know, we were lucky to score the first couple baskets, tried to get a timeout. Um, but Livers, you know, banged two threes right away. And they just keep coming. I think as you watch Michigan, you may hang around for a while, but they have the ability to sustain it throughout the course of the game. And uh, they play extremely hard. And uh, for us, we only had 57. And a big part of that was their ability to protect the rim. We had a hard time at the rim. Trace was uh, three for 12. And, you know, Race was three for five. Uh, but, you know, to me, we had one stretch in the game that really stood out, which was our lack of ability to rebound and chase down balls in the second half. Other than that, our guys competed pretty good. I thought our attitude was good. And um, today we ran into a good team. And uh, when you're down a guy like Armand, uh, you're going to have some odd combinations. And I think Jerome being able to play the three spot for the first time really all year did a nice job for us in being able to man that up give us a bigger guy out there. So I think we'll probably stay with that as we have that through the rest of the season. So, um, but we're on to the next one. I mean, at this time of year, there's not a whole lot to talk about. We had a quick turnaround to play in Michigan State team that we just played, I guess, a week ago. So uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about on that one. We got a, a lot to 
to get better at. And we're going to have to be a lot better against them because, you know, they, they've done what we're trying to do. As you struggle and as you go through it, they found a way to get one. And uh, to me, Michigan State looks like the team at the beginning of the season a lot of people thought could make a really deep run. And, um, you know, one thing can change to the next quick, and we're going to have to try to find our, our opportunity to make that happen. Kevin. Yeah, Coach, what are you seeing right now defending the three-point line in terms of, uh, you know, uh, rotations and stuff? And are there ways maybe you can make shooters a little more uncomfortable? I think our three-point field goal percentage defense has really suffered because of our lack of smarts, effort, and communication in transition over the course of the season. Uh, transition defense has been our biggest problem. And when you're playing against a team like a Michigan or you're playing against some of the teams that really have four shooters out there, we've really struggled with that element. That's a big part of them why. I think the second part of it is if you're not able to guard the ball, if you're not able to rebound it effectively and your help is late, uh, you're, not, you're not where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there, you're going to break down. And that's the second part of it. I don't know if some of the shots are any more challengeable at times. Sometimes you're playing against terrific players and they make shots. Uh, but no question about it, three-point field goal percentage defense in our conference play and our defense in general in conference play has been a big letdown. Dustin. Uh, Archie, just to get some clarification on Armand's injury, I mean, what uh, I know it's on, on the right foot. What, what can you tell us about it and how long uh, might he be out? Armand has a right foot injury, which isn't his original injury. His ankle was on the other uh, side. Uh, he awkwardly landed in the Rutgers game, and it seems to be more of a bone bruise issue than anything. Heel through the Achilles. Uh, uncomfortable sort of touch. Nothing structurally wrong. Um, you know, really at this point, it's a pain tolerance thing. And um, there wasn't even a, a question that he wouldn't go today. I don't believe he'll go the rest of the regular season in my mind uh, with how he's operating right now uh, in the boot. And, uh, you know, we have to find a way to, you know, collectively, you know, be a little bit better um, now that we know he's not going to play. You know, today was a quick turnaround and we have some unique combinations out there for the first time all year. But you know, to me, Jerome played really hard and you know, did a pretty good job for us on both ends of the floor. And he'll be a little bit more comfortable as we go into the next one. Greg. Um, Archie, two questions. When, when Trace starts as slowly as he does and doesn't rebound much, do you, do you see it kind of happening in real time? And is there, do you say anything to him to wake him up or just kind of wait for it to happen? Yeah, I, I think, you know, Greg, you know, Trace has started slow. And I think part of that is, is um, you know, maybe a little bit on him just in terms of his, his uh, aggressiveness and his approach. But he's been better at it recently. We've tried to do a better job of finding ways to get him started a little quicker with a basket and whatnot. But, you know, I think in this one, um, you know, he had some looks there early in the game um, that were tough shots against huge size. And sometimes him not being able to make a couple early uh, slows us down, but uh, usually he picks it up a little bit and keeps it going throughout the course of the game. Today was a hard one, though, and I think I watched the Iowa game at length the other day, and I saw you know the leading scorer in the country have a very difficult time scoring in that game as well. There's a reason I think Michigan is championship good, and I think a lot of people will talk about their skill level, and a lot of people are going to talk about their versatility and their ball movement and how hard they are to guard. I think they're one of the most difficult teams to play against on the other end of the floor. I mean, between Wagner, Livers, and, and uh, Big Hunter, I mean, you're looking at 6'10 to 6'9 to 7'2 across the board. And with Livers and Wagner's ability to switch, things are very difficult um, across the board. I thought today they mixed up their defenses, tried to take us out of rhythm and sets and made us play the game. And, you know, I think when we got Trace on the run and he's able to get some pick and roll game, he's able to get some more face up opportunities. He was better at attacking the basket, uh, but tough to score with with low post, you know, back to the basket moves consistently against that type of size um, inside. And Davis does a good job when they bring him in, too. He's very under underrated. Last question, Tom.
Archie, the uh, the Big Ten has been so hard all year, and you've you've seen them all now. It it seems like this Michigan team just doesn't really have any weaknesses. I mean, it's uh, do you see that there with them? No question. They deserve all of the um, whatever the whatever the word you want to use accolades praise. Uh, they deserve it all. First and foremost, I think, regardless of how they play on offense and defense, they have a great spirit about them. I mean, I think that's the one thing that probably you'd have to look at Michigan and just look at the way that they vibe and they play uh, on both ends of the floor. Uh, they get after you. They play hard for one another. They have a great bounce to them. So you can tell they're very together. That's a big part of what they're doing. And they have amazing size, like versatile size on both ends of the floor. They have a you know, to me, Livers is the most difficult matchup, uh, you know, for, for teams to figure out unless you're really, really small. But between Wagner and him, that's a pick your poison sometimes between how, how, how do you guard those two guys? You know, they're both guards. They both shoot, but they both really drive. And then, you know, big fella, he's a problem too now. I mean, he's as good as there's going to get inside the box. You know, when he catches it, he's got great, great hands and he can really score. So. Um, but to me, yeah, they're complete. And, um, you know, as they, as they approach here toward the finish, um, they have a great opportunity to do, you know, and go as far as anybody in the country. I haven't seen uh, some of the other teams. I know within our league, if you do what they're doing, you're the real deal. Thank you, Coach.